First, Liz, the Australia Day wars continue. Oh, do they ever. It's an impossible hard pill for the left to swallow. The January 26th will always be Australia Day. It doesn't matter if you hate it. It doesn't matter if you vote for it at your local council or vote against it. It doesn't matter. It will always be the day. In 1788, the first fleet pulled into Sydney Cove. Arthur Phillip popped out and pulled out the Union Jack. You can't change it. And yet, that's exactly what Bayside City Council, a Melbourne council, it's always a Melbourne council, took to their council meeting tonight to vote on. Basically, do we lend our heft to trying to change the date in our patch? But here's the kicker. Here's the story. It was just three months ago that this same council put out a community survey, community satisfaction survey, it bears mentioning, and two-thirds of their constituency got back to them using that survey saying, no, we're perfectly happy with keeping Australia Day on January 26th, to quote the survey. More than 110 people gave their reasons for opposing any changes, with the most common being that they, quote, did not see any reason or problem to change events or celebrations being held on Australia Day. To quote one anonymous resident, Local councils have no right to make any assertions in regards to Australia Day. Preach, preacher. Perfectly said. Now, we don't know whether they're taking care of roads, rates and rubbish, but obviously they're very passionate about this. And we found out, because the meeting was this evening, it was actually unanimously voted down. Why, though? Because you don't put a motion up and then not even support your own motion. What happened was the press, you're welcome, it's what we're here for, went, went to print on this. Everyone in Bayside found out what was going on, made such a huff about it that when this motion was actually put up at the council meeting tonight, every single one of them, again, no conviction whatsoever, right. every single one of them voted the motion down. What a joke. Power to the people, <laughs> as, uh, as was once sung by Yoko Ono and co. Um, I mean, it's just extraordinary, isn't it? You would think if you go out and do a survey or consultation, this is the, the, the folly of consultation, right? Mm. Anytime you see a government or a council or anyone else saying we're going out to consultation, what they actually mean is we're going out to check that everyone else already agrees with what we want to do and if they agree with what we want to do, well, we've got the green light and then we'll go and do it. And then if you come back and tell them what they don't want to hear, they go, oh, jeez, what are we going to do now? We'll just do it anyway. You know, I mean, what are these people playing? You've got to wonder about the clowns at Bayside Council, right? So they decide, let, let's survey the ratepayers, then let's ignore them and call it reconciliation. <laughs> Man, that's a stupid plan. But I reckon if you ran for local government and as your policy you promised ratepayers, if you elect me, I promise I will do nothing. <laughs> I will do nothing. I'll collect your bins. I'll fill in some potholes. But other than that, I'm not doing anything. I reckon you'd win in a landslide. 100%. Well, they were like, you well, you won't do. preach to us about everything else. You won't change our national day. Do me a favour. When two-thirds of your constituency say they want one thing and you actually actively pursue the very opposite, the entire lot of you should go. Who elected you? Your rate payers. Who pays your wages? Yeah. It's a pretty the, handsome the wage is... too. I've been a city councillor. They do. Your job is to represent them. You're doing the exact opposite. The, the problem is they're not answering to ratepayers. All of these councils have signed up to well, Reconciliation Australia. they do, come Australia, voting day. Yeah. And then they have to form these Reconciliation Action Advisory Groups and they've got a whole list of things they've got to tick off to show that they are doing their bit for mm. reconciliation. And clearly that's more important than the views of ratepayers. But thank God, as you said, with the pressure applied, they all back down in the end and Australia Day will continue on January 26th. And Caleb. this is why councils should be abolished because they are just replete, and I'm sorry, Liz, because I know you've been a councillor, but they are replete... Oh, no, don't people. apologise to me. And they are replete I left that burning dumpster fire. Actually, it was a good council. Yeah. Neighbourhood busybodies, they got nothing better to do. They're either retired and collecting the, the council allowance on the side for a bit of fun, mm. uh, dealing with all the, the idiots that 
that they see down at the bowls club or whatever it is. They've got barrows to push. Mm. They don't go in mm. there for the right reasons. Some do, but many of them go in there because, oh, yeah, I'm a, I'm a councillor about town. I'm sorry, <laughs> no one thinks it's worth anything. They just think you're a sad sack. Get out of there. <laughs>